Here are all the different ways you can finally add some significant power to this car with tuning. I'm going to explain all of them to you right now. So this is a video that I actually made a little while ago. However, right before I made the video and edited it, I was about to put it out, I caught wind that HP Tuners was about to release the much anticipated availability of tuning the C8s and everything on the Global B platform. Uh, I made a few phone calls, spoke to a few people I know, a couple of friends, and verified that this in fact was in fact true. A couple weeks later, sure as could be, HP Tuners released the announcement that they could tune all the vehicles now and that tuning was now finally available to the C8 Corvette and everything else that's available on the Global B platform, such as the CT5B Blackwing, CT4B Blackwing, and any other trucks and things like that that run on there. That made a big difference in a lot of things. So now you have availability of a lot of different power adders with full tuning support, and that changes the game. Prior before I made this video, and that was before the tuning announcement was made, and that was why I didn't release the video or make anything, because obviously it was going to be antiquated information at that point. So. Here's an overview of every single type of power adder that you can add to your car to make it safe, reliable, cost effective, things like that. And I'm gonna talk about all different pros and cons and what's available and what's not and how to get it done and where to get it done. Now, this is not a full 100% all-inclusive um, overview of everything that's out there. I'm sure there's a couple things that I've missed, but these are a lot of the big ones and these are gonna be the most one, biggest ones that you see out there. So, you have a couple of different uh, availability options. So when it comes to adding significant power, you basically have three routes you can go. And before the availability of tuning was out there, you kind of had to choose between two out of three of the criteria that you wanted to meet. Cost versus reliability versus power, okay? Before, you could add a lot of power, and it would probably cost you a lot, but it probably wouldn't be all that reliable. Or you could maybe spend not as much money, keep it very reliable, but you really wouldn't be adding that much power. Well, all that has changed now with the availability of HP tuners. Now, quickly, I am going to go over how you can actually, or what the process is, for tuning these things. It's not your traditional ones like you had before, say if you had a C7 or a C6 or any other type of car. You can't just plug in the, your, your laptop with HP tuners and go ahead and pull the file, change it, and put it back on. It's not that simple. It can be done, but it's a little more intensive, and here's the basic overview of how it's done. So. Here's the first thing you're gonna have to do. Now again, I apologize, I know I'm not the greatest editor in the world, I don't really know how to do all this stuff with the computer, sit down and go through all this stuff. I try to make it as simple as possible so that way I can edit it as easily as possible because I don't really wanna waste a lot of time doing that. Anyways, so now, if you have a laptop computer, granted that you're running uh, HP tuners on, you know how to use that, you're gonna go on the HP tuners website and you're gonna update your uh, VCM suite and editor uh, scanner programs all right off the bat. Okay, that's the first thing you're going to do. Second thing is you need to get this tool, the MPVI 3. The MPVI 2, 2 Plus, and 1 will not work. You need to get the 3. So you can take your old 2, 2 Plus, or whatever, and send it into HP Tuners, and they will give you a, um, an upgrade for it or a trade-in. Okay? So what you do is you can send in that old one, and you can go all the way down here at the bottom. You can see the MPVI 3 costs about $400. So that's going to be 400 bucks right off the bat. Then... Once you have that tool, depending on the tool that you trade in, if you trade in an MPVI 2 or a 2 Plus, they're going to give you four to six free credits just for uh, the trade in. So that's definitely a big plus and will come in handy. Okay. Now I have an uh, MPVI 2. I'm going to send in my old one, get the MPVI 3, and I have four credits left over on my MPVI 2 that will transfer over to the MPVI 3. So if you have previous credits, they will transfer over. Now, when I trade in the MPVI2, I'm gonna get at least another four credits. That's gonna give me eight credits total, which is exactly the amount of credits that I need in order to unlock the E99 ECM in these cars, which works out for me pretty well. So, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, like I said, is go on the website and you're gonna need this MPVI3. After you have that, you're gonna get that, and then you're also gonna need universal credits. Universal credits are $50 each, and you are gonna need eight of them in order to unlock this ECM, okay? Once you have eight of those, you can now unlock it. Now, depending on where you go, um, it seems to be universally the case is gonna be, once you have the ECM, you're gonna take it out of the car, you're gonna send it into HP Tuners via whatever shop that you're doing it with, or the shop's gonna do it for you, and they're going to physically unlock it. And that is a $1,500 cost. So, right now you're looking at $1,500 
uh, for that, and then another $400 for the credit, so bringing your total up to $1,900 total. Now, if you're somehow doing this remotely by yourself at home, you're gonna need another $400 to get the MPVI3. So now you're up to $2,300, okay? Now, once you've got that, you can go through this whole process. It's not just as simple as the old ways of doing things. You know, yes, you're gonna take the computer out, send it to them, they're gonna unlock it, they're gonna send it back to you, you're gonna reinstall it, you're gonna pull the file, read it, modify it, buy the credits, and then write the file back onto the computer. However, you're not done there. There is one more step. You're going to need something called a J2534 tool, which is this. You can get these from Amazon, I'll put them in the link below. Uh, there's this one right here, Mongoose J2534 OEM. You can pick one specifically for GM. It lets you pick the manufacturer when you click on it. Cardac also has one and Autel has one or whatever the case may be. And you're just going to need this tool in conjunction with your laptop in order to reprogram the car. Okay. Now, once you reprogram the car, you're going to need something else. You're going to need an account through AC Delco TDS, which is this website, which is just acdelcotds.com. You go right here, it'll come right here you're gonna to wanna to get a subscription for your vehicle. So right here, SPS, Service Programming Systems, SPS2. You go over here, select, you can go down to one vehicle, pay $45, and you're gonna put in your VIN number, and now you can reprogram modules from your computer in conjunction with that J2534 tool to reprogram whatever you do. Now, once you rewrite a file on the ECM, you are going to have to do a uh, module recalibration. Basically, you're gonna have to basically sync all the modules back together so that way they play nice with each other. So, as you can see, the writing of a file for this is not as simple as the old days, but it can still be done. So, quick recap before we go into all the different power routers and everything I was talking about before with the flashing. Now, if you have a shop handling this for you, that's great, let them handle it. But the process of doing it uh, by yourself through via maybe a remote tuning, if you have a tuner that trusts you to do this, it is possible. First off, HP tuners update on your laptop. Second off, get your MPVI3 tool, whether it be through an upgrade or you have to buy a new one. Fourth, get all the credits that you need, the eight credits that you need to unlock the ECM. Then, once you have all that, you're gonna take the computer out of the car, the ECM, send it off to HP tuners via through your tuner or shop that you're working with, or possibly on your own, although right now you can only do it through a shop. So you're gonna to have to do it through a shop ultimately somehow as of right now. It gets sent off to them, unlocked, sent back to you. Then use your MPVI3 tool and your eight credits to read the tool, uh, file off of the computer. Now, once the file is off, you can modify it, change it, and then reload it back onto your ECM. Then at that point, you have to use your laptop in conjunction with a J2534 tool, that Mongoose, Mongoose tool or the Cardac or whatever one you go with, and the AC Delco TDS to perform a serial data re-authentication calibration uh, configuration, okay? That's basically going to resync all the modules together and it's going to make all the computers work in conjunction with each other. If you don't do that reflash, it's not gonna work properly. So keep that in mind before you go down that path if you don't have a shop doing it on your own. Now here are all the different ways you have to add power to it. You can either add a supercharger, a twin turbocharger system, and as to the best of my knowledge, there are no big single turbo systems available as of right now. I'm sure that will probably change knowing the aftermarket community, but we'll see. Or you can keep it naturally aspirated and go that route. Not a whole lot of options that way, but there are many other options available right now. So with the supercharger, you have a procharger system, which is a centrifugal supercharger, which has more of a linear curve, and then you also have Magnuson LPE, Lincoln Filter Performance Engineering. They have a positive displacement supercharger in form of a 2650. You can go ahead and get them, which is also a great system also. Callaway is gonna be offering their supercharger system as well too. Callaway has a long-standing history of modifications to Corvettes and even doing things with GM's kind of approval. Uh, you'll have to send the car to them, uh, but they have a 2300 supercharger that's available for it. Hennessy also has a system. I can't seem to get too many of the exact specs on them, but it really it really looks like it's a, basically a procharger system. The other big name of the superchargers when it comes to Corvettes, as a lot of people know, is ANA. Now I'll touch on ANA Corvette right off the bat. They're out in California, actually here in California, um, and I've spoken to them extensively. They, even though tuning is now available, are not interested in some sort of a system for the C8 Corvette right now. 
They have no plans, they're not looking into it right now, which is a little bit of a bummer because their C6 and C7 systems were really, really good, but it's just not something that they are interested in doing right now. Who knows, maybe that will change. I hope it does. a a is a great company, they make great kits, and I don't know anybody that has any problems with their kits ever, although I'm sure they're out there, but for the most part, a lot of people have great things to say about a a You also have plenty of twin turbocharger system. Pipes Performance is a big one. Uh, ETS, Extreme Turbo Systems, which a variety of different vendors use their system. CSP, Com Complete Street Performance out of Pennsylvania, they have their own system. And East Coast Superchargers, I've uh, made a twin turbo system which I'm going to touch on also. Late Model Racecraft in Houston, Texas, they have their own uh, custom system basically. And also Vengeance Racing has their own system as well too. But I'm going to touch on all the pros and cons to these systems as what you might want to go with. Also, if you want to keep it naturally aspirated, now the tuning is available, you have a lot of different paths you can go. Pites actually offers a naturally aspirated package. Now you can even go through LME, late model engines, or anybody else, possibly get yourself a stroker short block, you can do cams in this car, you can change things like that, and then other uh, outside um, vendors will also sell plenty of bolt-on modifications you can get. One of the more famous, if not the most famous, is Paragon Performance. Intakes, headers, exhausts. Uh, intake manifolds, so on and so forth. And I'll touch a little bit on those as well too. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna to touch on here is one of the big ones, the big, big ones, Procharger. Procharger has been around for a long, long time. And let me also preface all this by saying every single one of these kits that I'm gonna tell you about, or all the parts that you're gonna buy, these are all coming from high-end, top quality, good producing stuff. Nobody's quality in any of these kits, in my opinion, is going to be questionable in the least. None of them are super cheap, None of them are going to kind of get cheap parts that are going to fail on you or anything like that. They're all going to be top quality, good, and reliable. So just keep that in mind. So Pro Charger has a couple of big highlights of it. Number one, you're going to have a centrifugal supercharger, which basically looks like a turbo. Let's run through a belt driven that doesn't sit in place where the intake manifold is, like on a positive displacement type supercharger that Magnuson has in Algoa. So you have a centrifugal supercharger that has more of a linear horsepower curve with an air to water intercooler integrated into its replacement intake manifold. It runs on a jack shaft with a cog drive, basically meaning the belt is driven off the front of the motor, which is more towards the middle of the car, through a jack shaft that comes towards the back of the car where it mounts the, on top of the transmission, and then the cog drive transfers the power over to the uh, supercharger itself in order to spin it. Now there's two different systems you can get, stage one and stage two. Stage one is five PSI with 170 horsepower added claiming numbers. And stage two adds 7.5 PSI of uh, boost pressure, and they claim a 45% increase. So whatever your car dynos on, or whatever the base numbers are, just take 45% of that increase, and that's what you're going to get as your um, end result, give or take. Uh, this system is also fully reversible, and these numbers, when I talk about any prices for any of these, these are basic general numbers. Like example, the Pro Charger has a wide array of different options you can pick. Stage one, stage two, a tuner kit. You can get one with a fully tuned DCM already where you send it to them and they'll put the tune on it. Or you can have your own tuner put a tune on it for it and work from it from there. And you also have carbon fiber options, etc., etc. So it's a wide range of prices. So this one will run you anywhere from about 15000 to 20000 possibly even up to 22000 if you have a convertible, which I'll touch on in a second here. Some of the pros to this system include that it's 100% bolt-on and Procharger claims that it is an easy install. They say you can install this in your driveway. It's gonna be a task. You have to get underneath the car because you have to do the belt driven and everything. This is not gonna be a quick five or six hour job. This is gonna be a very involved job. If you're just kind of like a weekend warrior type person where you kind of wrench around with cars a little bit, I would get a buddy or somebody that really knows what they're doing in order to help you with this because this is quite an involved install despite the fact that yes, it can be done in your driveway per se, but you really need to know what you're doing here has a billet intake manifold that has a uh, intercooler uh, incorporated into the actual intake manifold itself. Procharger also has a very large network of dealers. So pretty much anybody's going to be a Procharger dealer and it's going to be a very large support system that goes along with it. Uh, it has self-contained oil, which you do have to change periodically, which is a little bit of a process to do it. I believe Paragon actually put out a video on how to do it. So once you fill it, you actually have to siphon the old oil out and put it back in. But then you also have to remove all the covers and everything to get to the Pro Charger in order to change the oil. A little bit of a nuisance, but it can be done. 
Um, you do have a lot of different upgrades available, including carbon fiber and uh, painted black upgrades for as far as the intake manifold, the bracket, the procharger itself, and covers that go on top. And they can be kind of pricey. And even that little uh, new cover that they put that goes in the trunk of your car. Um, it does retain all of your NPP and AFM functions. They even incorporate something into there where if you, I believe, press the cruise control button, you can turn the cylinder uh, deactivation on and off with that. So that's a neat little feature. Uh, but you will retain NPP functions. So if you spent a lot of money and got yourself a nice exhaust, like say a Borla Attack or a Corsa, you can keep your NPP valves and or, or even keep the stock ones as well. You also have injector bungs that are optional. In order for you to add an optional port injection later on, if you're going to add some sort of piggyback computer or something like it later on, who knows? Now the tuning is available. There's a wide uh, array of things that are available. Some of the cons for this is you are going to lose some of your trunk space. You're going to have that big bulge that comes into the trunk where you're going to kind of lose trunk space. Now, we all know trunk space on this thing isn't plentiful to begin with, so that's something you're going to want to think about here. Um, one of the things that I particularly and I don't really like and I don't um, know why they did this, but I'm sure they have a reason for it, uh, they put the mass airflow sensor before the supercharger on this one. Usually, you'd like to see the mass airflow sensor after the supercharger to get accurate readings of air actually going into the engine itself, but they have it before that. Um, they, kept it, they kept it in a stock place, and you can see I believe Pites even did a, a kit where they put a procharger system on and they relocate the mass. It's just better for tuning and you can kind of fine tune things a little better, it's a little bit more accurate. Um, but that's a big thing, that was one of the things that I really didn't like about it. The other thing that you can do it is that currently, as of this today, whenever this is uploaded, that is not available for a convertible, the hardtop convertible, and it is not CARB approved, meaning you can't have it in your car in California or any other state that has CARB regulations. To the best of my knowledge, it's only California. So if that is something that is worrisome to you, if you want to keep the car legal, which you should if you're in California, um, you're going to have to take that into consideration. Now, I have spoken to numerous people at, at uh, Super, uh, Pro Charger, and they said that both the hardtop convertible kit and the CARB approval are in the works, so they should be available soon possibly sometime mid to late 2023. Okay, so next one I'm gonna talk about here is the Magnuson kit in conjunction with LPE or Lingenfelter Performance Engineering. Both big, big names, everybody knows these two. <clears throat> they make high quality, good stuff. And here's a basic overview, of the, a basic overview of their kit. Number one, this is gonna be a positive displacement over a supercharger using an Eaton 2650 uh, rotor pack that's pushing out seven PSI. Now, I do want to touch on something real quick with the 2650 pack. A lot of people use that term um, incorrectly. They say, oh, it's a 2650, it's 2,650 cc's, and that's the size of the supercharger. Well, yes it is, but that's not entirely true. The way it works is, what that means is, every single, single rotation of the rotors inside of the supercharger itself, that means it's pushing 2,650 cc's of air per single rotation. It's not the actual physical size of the supercharger itself. So. Just to clarify that real quick, real quick, that's what the 2650 actually means. Next, this thing has an air to water intercooler, just like the Pro Charger system. It has it integrated into the um, intake manifold for what is considered the positive displacement supercharger on this particular case, because the supercharger takes place of the intake manifold in this, with obviously an external heat exchanger that is mounted in the uh, driver's side, <coughs> excuse me, um, cooling duct, just like on the Pro Charger kit. This also comes with a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty. That's a big deal, especially when you're paying this much money. And when it comes to money, the last time I checked, this kit was starting at about $24,950. Now, it may have gone up since then, I'm not sure, but expect that to be your base price for it, okay? Now, to the best of my knowledge, too, and for what I verified, that does include installation. So, uh, there is a couple different tuning processes now that HP Tuners is available for these. You can either tune it on your own through your own tuner, or you can go through their CCAL process Well, they will tune the computer for you. They'll put their own flash on it and set it and ready, and you're good to go. Okay? I don't think you can change it too much afterwards later. You might be able to. You probably can with HP tuners. But if you just want to get something out the door, you can go through their CCAL process. Okay? Some of the pros and cons of this system is that the pro is that it is available with its own ECM tune. So if you have a shop that can install it, but maybe doesn't feel confident tuning the thing, you can send them the computer and they can put a tune file on there and you're pretty much gonna be good to go. This system does retain your NPP and AFM functions as well, just like the Pro Charger kit. 
And it has a positive as a procharger kit because this is a positive displacement supercharger and it doesn't intrude into that chunk space, you are going to retain all of your chunk space as well too. So you're not gonna lose anything like that like you would with the procharger kit. Um, you are gonna be slightly more susceptible to possible heat soak though because it's a positive displacement supercharger. Um, I haven't really heard of that being the case, but that's always something to be aware of with any positive displacement supercharger. Uh, next, you can do a bunch of optional upgrades when it comes to this kit. A Haltech intake, G-Force axles, which most people will recommend, they automatically want you to do. Uh, you can also add cap back exhaust and headers. You can lower it, you can put Alcon brakes on it, and you can also do valve train upgrades. Now, from what I've heard, pretty much every shop that installs these things, they're gonna at minimum tell you, you need to do the G-Force axles and the valve train upgrades. That includes new stronger springs that are, uh, to the, so what I've heard so far, they are actually, they're still single springs, they're not dual, but um, they are strong enough and stronger to compensate for the extra power. And you also get hardened push rods. Those are the big things that also come with the valve train upgrades. Now, another pro of this is that with this system, you can get this with a convertible, the hardtop convertible. It is available right now with a hardtop convertible. Now, some of the cons is, to the best of my knowledge of what I've been able to see so far, I have not verified this, but from what I see, there is no optional injector bungs that are available, at least not as of right now. I would imagine that's going to change, especially knowing Magnuson and Lincoln filter, that that's probably going to change, especially with the availability of HP tuners now. Um, the other thing is with the con is, you can't self-install self this kit. You can't call up Magnuson or Lincoln filter or whatever, say, hey, I wanna order a kit, send it to my house, I'm gonna do it in my driveway or whatever, or send it to this shop or whatever, they won't do it. They have a network of specific installers that only they will put the supercharger kit for you. So you have to be near one of these installers and I'll go over them in a second. Another thing too is again, going back to the whole thing in California, they do not have a carb number as of yet. They are carb pending though, which means that they're probably going to get it. I would imagine that this would be a big thing for them, especially since Magnuson is based out of California and they're really gonna want that number so that way they can sell it to people in California. Now, if you want this kit, there's only a handful of places that you can get it. There are two shops in Michigan through Lincoln Felter Performance Engineering that you can get it through. Uh, you can look up on their online exactly where they are. There's also one shop supposedly in Indiana. You can also send it to Magnuson headquarters in Ventura, California, they will do it. There's also Redline Motorsports in Pompano Beach, Florida. Excuse me if I mispronounced that. And also you have uh, Extreme, excuse me, East Coast Superchargers in Cream Ridge, New Jersey. They will also do it as well too. And you also have Boost District in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas. They can also install it. If you happen to be in Canada, I believe that there is one shop, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it is in Calgary. Uh, you can look it up on Magnuson and Lincoln Brothers website. It does list it and the shop is up in Calgary for you in order for you to get it installed if you happen to be in Canada. So, a lot of pros, a lot of cons. Magnuson is a well-known name and this is a good kit to go with if this is what you want to do. So the last two options that you have here for the supercharger kits come from both Callaway and Hennessy, two big names that everybody knows who they are. Callaway makes their own supercharger and their own kit and everything, and it seemed like Hennessy has kind of borrowed the Procharger system and put it on their car. I can't confirm this, but if you look at pictures, it looks very similar. Who knows, maybe they came up with their own. I can't seem to get a straight answer out of anybody. Maybe if somebody at Hennessy could clarify or somebody that actually had this done in their car can clarify, but it sure looks like a Procharger system. So starting off with Callaway. Callaway has seemed to be long awaited. It hasn't come out. They seem to be the last ones to the game. Well, seems like that is gonna be the case because Callaway offers their cars with full installation and things like that. And one of them is in California. So as a result, they have to be able to sell their cars with 50 state uh, tuning available and 50 state street legal availability. So that's the big thing is probably holding them up here and it seems like it is because getting carb, uh, a CARB EO number from the state of California is no easy task. So Callaway uses a 2300 swing through supercharger. The latest numbers that they're claiming are gonna be 687 horsepower and 643 foot-pounds of torque. That's gonna to be at the crank, not the wheels. Um, they will offer a fully tuned ECM, so if you send the car off to Callaway, they will tune the ECM there as part of their package. But if you want Callaway to do this, you're gonna to have to send them the car. Again, you can't buy their kit and put it in yourself. You have to send it to Callaway. And they only have two locations. One is in Connecticut, and the other one is in Southern California. So you actually have to send the car over to them. Depending on how much that costs for you to ship it is gonna be another factor that you're gonna to have to consider while uh, possibly doing this upgrade. 
Now, they will do it on all C8s, both new and used. They have something called the Second Chance Program. Basically, it means if you already bought your C8 and it doesn't have it on it, you can send it to them and they will put it on. Or, if you buy a new C8 from the, a dealership, they will send it to Callaway right off the bat before you even take delivery. So that way, when you take delivery of the car, it already has everything installed on it. So, uh, Callaway does seem to be offering a center exit exhaust on this, kind of similar to a Z06 style type exhaust which I know a lot of people will like. And because it's a positive displacement supercharger and not a centrifugal like the Procharger, it's not going to intrude on any trunk space. And from what I can gather so far, you will retain all NPP and AFM functions. Now, I would especially imagine that this is gonna be the case because they're gonna make it 50 state legal. Uh, you can get this in a convertible, so you hardtop convertible owners, that is a possibility for you. And it will be carb legal in all 50 states and supposedly will be available in late 2023. Another option that you can get with Callaway too is they do offer somewhat of a pseudo wide body kit that comes with it. Now this wide body kit that Callaway offers isn't really a true wide body kit per se. Really it's just some extra wheels and probably tires obviously and some fender flares that go on the front and rear that make it look a little bit wider and add some stance to it. I kind of like the way it looks. It looks simple, basic, and clean, but it's not really a lot like the actual wide body kits that are out there that you can get. Me, personally, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of these kits because they kind of look a little tacked on to me, and to me, that's just not my taste, but hey, if that's what you like, then it's your car. You do whatever you want with it. So, <clears throat> but that is an extra option that you can get from Callaway. I don't know about price per se, but uh, it is something out there that is an extra option to it if you want it. Next and last up, you have the Hennessy kit. Now the Hennessy kit is something that you'll have to send to Hennessy to have them done. They operate out of Sealy, Texas, which is I think about an hour, give or take, uh, west of about Houston, that area down there. So <clears throat> the Hennessy kit looks very similar to a Procharger kit, if not possibly a Procharger kit. I haven't been able to 100% verify this. If you happen to have gotten this done by your car, please let me know. But it sure looks exactly like a Procharger kit, if not the actual kit itself. They claim 708 horsepower and 638 uh, on your power numbers. Uh, that is a crank rated uh, power and torque, so keep that in mind, which is a 44% increase on horsepower and a 37% increase on torque. They do offer a three year, 36,000 mile warranty and they will tune your uh, ECM with it as well too, the load on your calibration. Whether or not they can do a custom tuner, I don't know. I would imagine with HP tuners now being out and available to do so, they probably will be able to offer something, but you'll have to verify with them. Uh, they do offer the same, or excuse me, the same things that go with the Procharger kit, all the pros and cons, basically apply this exactly the same. You are going to lose some of that trunk space because of that bulge, because of the intake that comes into the trunk space, that they replace that cover with a new one that goes over it, so you are going to lose some trunk space. You do have the option of also getting some add-ons with it. Wheels, there's like a stripes, a stripes and like a livery kit and things like that. You can change out the exhaust, they'll put, I believe, a titanium one on there as well too. But if you put the titanium exhaust on there, you are going to lose your NPP functions or so they claim on their website. Now, price-wise for this kit, you are looking at parts and labor installed starting, the last time I checked, $34,950 to start. Now, depending on all the add-ons and everything you get on it, you're gonna top out at about $49,950. I don't know if these prices have gone up since then. It's quite possible they have. I don't know, but that was the last quote that I saw. So that is quite a pricey price tag, but you're also gonna get Hennessy's name on it. So if you ever go to resell the car, Hennessy is somebody that everybody knows. Everybody knows that Hennessy is a good quality company. They've built the reputation. There's a reason why they're as big as they are. I know some people will probably have some things to say about Hennessy. They may or may not like them, but regardless of what you want, everybody knows Hennessy and you're gonna be able to have some, some good, good quality kit and a good quality installation that goes along with this. And then they're probably gonna back it up pretty well too. Hence the reason they also offer a three year 36,000 mile warranty. Now, again, with them, you are gonna have to ship them your car. They're gonna have to do it in Sealy, Texas where their main shop is. So you can't do this yourself. This is something that they're going to install for you. So those are all your basic supercharger kits, both positive displacement and centrifugal. Now I'm gonna to touch on the twin turbo kits and the first one's gonna come from Pike's Performance. Pike's Performance is based out of a town called Tumble, Texas, just northwest down there. So he's got a lot of advantages. If you don't know who Alex Pites is, who's the owner and operator and the tuner at Pites Performance, you really need to look into him. He is an extremely knowledgeable, very smart, top-notch guy. He's very nice. He'll talk to you as much as you need to talk to him about and everything to you. He is one of the top guys. 
I believe he used to work for uh, Celine with uh, Ford. He did a lot of work with HP tuners and also the tuning tool. He wrote a lot of stuff that if you are a tuner, if you do, and if you know how to tune cars and you reference some material, chances are he probably wrote it or had something to do with it. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with Pike's performance. So Pike's performance, most notably the most famous car that they've ever built, probably was Amelia Hartford's car that she has. I believe it's about 1,200 horsepower with the lower mount kit. Of their kit is their lower mounted turbos. They go on the bottom of the car in the back towards the bumper. So basically where the muffler sits right now, they just the turbos go right there so it doesn't intrude on anything in the actual engine space. Okay, so this is going to be available for coupes or convertibles. Now Pites also has a very wide range of things available to them. So their kits vary greatly in prices. The last time I checked, and I believe their website has been updated since then, I believe there's slight differences in price. But they go as cheap as $19,180 all the way up to $69,642. Now, if you're spending that kind of money, believe me, you're getting a lot for your money. Because, well, that's a pretty pricey price tag, but you're getting it. So they range anywhere from a 150 horsepower increase to an 800 horsepower increase. And this is at the wheels, from what I can gather. Uh, the focus of them is Precision 6266 turbos, which if you don't know what those are, by the way, those are basically the size of the turbos on either side, the compressor and the actual turbine itself. 66 millimeter turbine and a 62 millimeter uh, compressor, depending on whether you're looking at the exducer or the inducer wheel of whatever side of the turbo that you're looking on. So these run off engine oil. They are not self-lubricated. They run off engine oil, so they tap into the system and it feeds back into the tank with dual EXA uh, scavenger pumps. You have one for each turbo on each side, pumping it back up into the system once it comes down. Now these pumps have a little tank, a little reservoir that sits below it, so that way they're never starving for oil either, and that's how it gets pumped back into the system itself. These come with dual 42 millimeter wastegates and also dual blow-off valves, and a T304 stainless X-pipe that comes with the kit. <clears throat> now, the pinnacle of their kit before used to be the Delta Control Mod was basically the ultimate piggyback computer. Well, now that HP Tuners is available for this, I would imagine the Delta Control Module isn't going to be used too much. It is still available, and I would imagine they'll probably still incorporate at least a little bit until they can figure out the full TCM programming and things like that. Because you can still use these things to, to control line pressure for the TCM. Now, let me touch on that real quick, too, because I haven't mentioned that before. A lot of people are going to be wondering right off the bat, well, can the transmission handle this type of power that you're adding to it? Well, yes and no. Arguably, the number that people kind of go back and forth on is about 550 or 600 wheel horsepower, which is where the clutches start to really not like it. If you're really going 600 horsepower, wheel horsepower or above, you're going to want to consider or possibly even you're going to have to have an upgraded set of clutches of which you normally the people you're going to get that from is Dotson Motorsports, which pretty much everybody's going to deal with them and they're going to put some clutch patches and cl clutch packs in the car as well too. So there's a bunch of add-ons that you can also do with Pites Performance too, fully customizable. You can add different axles, you can add methanol systems, you can add different fuel pumps and injector bungs and, and clutch packs and things like that. It's pretty infinitely customizable and he will work with you whatever you want. And if you get something from Pites Performance, it's gonna create a lot of power and I can pretty much guarantee you it's gonna be safe and reliable and you're gonna get everything that you want out of that car. It's gonna be fantastic. Pites is a top-notch, Installer, tuner, dealer, everything. So, Alex Pites, like I said, is very knowledgeable and they offer great support. They do have a carb kit in the works that they're going to add some hydrocarbon traps to this kit, supposedly, and possibly make it carb legal for you California customers as well, too. That is still in the works right now, and as you know, these things just take time. But for everybody else, in the meantime, you can go ahead and get this. Um, you do are going to, you are going to retain all of your trunk space because they're lower amount of turbos, so you're not going to have that intrusion like a Procharger kit. And you're also going to retain catalytic converters. You're probably going to lose, though, your NPP and your AFM valves. Actually, not probably. You will. You're going to lose your NPP and AFM valves. Now, you're not going to have any mufflers on the car either, though, at this point, too, because the turbos are going to go in that place. However, you will still have your factory catalytic converters, should you so choose, or possibly a green cell cat or something like that that's going to come with it. And we got to remember, a turbocharger also acts like a muffler. So it's not going to be a, a track exhaust all the time and everything and things like that. So uh, the turbochargers do act like mufflers, but you will lose your NPP function. Now, you can technically self-install this kit. As to whether or not he will send you a kit, it looks like he probably will, because it looks like they do have mail-out packages on their website. So you can go ahead and put it in yourself. 
Now, again, if you're not knowledgeable, if you're some sort of weekend warrior, change your own oil type guy, and that's really about it, this is not a kit for you to install. If you screw something up on this, you can cause catastrophic damage. So either mail it out, have it sent to a shop, which is probably recommended, or you can probably have it installed yourself, but speak to Alex at Alex Pipes Performance and he'll explain everything to you. Uh, he's a great guy, very nice, and he'll explain everything to you that you need to know and any questions that you have, he'll go over it with you. Pipes Performance is definitely a very um, a top, top choice when it comes to twin turbo kits. The only thing that worries me a little bit about this kit is that it's a low mounted kit and that if you live somewhere that is prone to flooding, that is something into consideration. I have actually asked him this before, and he says that where he lives in Texas, they get some pretty uh, strong flooding down there, or pretty uh, noticeable flooding down there at times, and he hasn't had any problems with it so far. You are gonna keep splash guards underneath there, so they will be covered, but just something to keep in mind. If you go through a puddle that you might think is a little bit too deep, you're gonna take in a lot of water and you're gonna come into some big problems uh, after that so just keep that in mind but from what I've heard from Alex himself he says that this has not been an issue with anybody that he knows of or has seen so far at least not to the best of my knowledge all right so the next kit that I'm going to touch on here is the ETS kit or extreme turbo systems kit these guys are based out of Washington State and they have a lot of experience in a lot of other realms I know they're pretty big with the Mitsubishi Evos I think they're involved with the Subaru WRX's I don't know I'm not really big on the JDM community but they're also involved with the Nissan GTRs and things of that nature. So they, they've been around for a little while. They released a kit recently, which is a lower mounted kit, just like the Pipes kit that I just uh, spoke about, that is used by a lot of different people. Uh, if you're gonna get your car done by either Cicio Performance, Joe Tech, RSR, things like that, they're gonna use an ETS kit. This again, like I said, is a lower mounted kit, but there are two different versions of the kit that you can get, I believe, especially from Cicio Performance. There's the regular, quote unquote, and then there's also an X-Pipe kit which basically that just takes where the intake air filters are, where they're mounted. If it's an X-pipe kit, then the air filters are gonna be on the outside and then the exhaust is gonna have like an X-pipe to it, just like anything else, just like the pipes kit. But if you go with the other kit, the intake filters are gonna be on the inner part of it and there's not going to be an X-pipe and it's gonna have a different sound to it. So you can go on um, their website and things like that. Uh, all over YouTube, they have videos that give you kind of the sound difference between the two and there is a notable difference and if you like one more than the other, then I suggest that you go with whatever one you choose or whichever one you like. This is obviously gonna be available for the coupe and the convertible because it's a low mounted kit. Now, this is gonna range in price also from anywhere from 15,345 all the way up to 21,845. Because there's a lot of options that you can get with this kit uh, as far as different customizations. The tips can be different size, the caps that you get with it, things like that, which features uh, GESI catalytic converters or Gessie caps. Uh, you can get three different turbo sizes, either a PT64, 68, or 76 millimeter turbo. The PT64 is going to be the one that they recommend for pretty much 90% of their customers, as they say. This is going to give you about 550 or 600 wheel horsepower, but it's also 1200 horsepower plus capable. The PT68 is rated to 700 or 800 uh, horsepower, 1500 plus capable, and the PT76 is 850 to 1000 real horsepower, but is 2000, P, uh, 2000 plus horsepower capable, all running supposedly at about four and a half PSI. Now, depending on the wastegate, I'm sure you can change that out, especially again with HP tuners being available, but speak to them and see what they have available and see what you want to do, what route you want to go down. Now, they also have two different versions of the kit you can get. You can get an intercooled kit, or you can get what they call a hot piped kit, which basically just does not have an intercooler on it. So uh, know that if you get the hot piped kit, you're going to be a little bit more prone to heat soak and things like that, especially if you live in certain states that get a lot hotter. Now, the nice thing is that if you just want to get the regular kit or the hot pipe kit and you want to add the intercooler later, you can do that and they will sell you the intercooler kit separately. So that's a nice little thing they can do. Uh, it does offer um, or feature dual 44 millimeter wastegates along with dual ball valves and it offers a two water pumps as well too. It has a rugged spur gear oil pump which is made from military grade materials and uh, you do lose your AFM and NPP just like on the Pipes kit and you can also get simulators available for this to keep that check engine light off. Uh, it comes with a three year warranty on parts. You can self install this or send it to whatever shop that you want to have put it in. And then you can also, also have to keep in mind too that again if you're in California this is not carb legal. So you can't put it on your car in California and in fact if you call up ETS and tell them that you want this kit and you live in California, they won't even send it to you. It's a big no-no for them and they don't want to 
get pinged by the EPA or face any fines or things like that, which I completely understand where they're coming from and why they're doing that. I wouldn't do either if I were them. So if you're in California, you're out of luck. It's not going to happen for you unless you find some way around it that you really shouldn't be doing anyways. But hey, that's on you for whatever you want to do. But ETS is a, a very widely known kit that a lot of people are going to use and a lot of people are going to see. And they make good, qual good quality, high, stu high quality stuff that's going to be pretty, good, pretty reliable for years to come. Okay, so these next two kits that I'm going to talk about are going to start talking about top-mounted turbos, meaning they're not going to be in that bumper space where the ETS and the Pites Performance kits are going to be, but they're actually going to be in the engine bay where the exhaust manifolds are. You are going to replace your factory exhaust manifolds with the manifolds that come with these kits. Me, personally, I like this a, a lot. I really like the way it looks. There's going to be zero to uh, little uh, zero to no lag time on them. And I just think it looks kind of cool, and then you're not worried about anything like water getting up there or anything like that, hitting a bad curve or something like that, damaging it. Not that there's anything wrong with the lower mounted kits because those are great kits too. This is just simply another option. The first one is going to come from CSP or Complete Street Performance. They are based out of Pennsylvania. You can see there they have a YouTube channel. Um, they are a, a very well-known, high-quality shop. Um, and the owner of that shop is extremely nice. You talk to him, he's got to be one of the nicest guys in the world. And he's not going to screw around with you in any which way, shape, or form. He's going to tell you how it is and what needs to be done. He's going to be very, um, very personable about it as well, too. So this is a kit, however, the one downside to it is that it's going to be no self-install. As of right now, they're not going to ship this kit out. If you want it done, you have to send it to Complete Street Performance. Probably because it's still in some research and development phases and things like that. And they want to kind of keep an eye on it. For the same reason right now that ECS or East Coast Supercharging is doing the same thing, and I'll touch on that in a bit. So this is a top-mounted kit where it incorporates the actual exhaust manifolds to spool up and at that point rather than being all the way down low. And one of the big things that he really claims on is that this is an emissions-compliant kit. You can even look on his uh, YouTube channel. He takes his very car with the kit on it, brings it to a Pennsylvania inspection station, and gets it past emissions. Now, if you live in California, again, carb compliance is a whole nother deal. You're out of luck. Sorry, but for all the other 49 states, as usual, uh, it looks like you're going to be probably okay, especially in, even if you're in Pennsylvania. They claim anywhere from, I, I believe, around 600 to 700 wheel horsepower on the kit, and you may or may have to get clutches at that point too, depending on what they, they go with you. Uh, these are going to be comp oilless turbos, meaning they don't tap into the engine's oil system in order for lubrication. They have their own special grease that comes with them. Now, you will have to um, service these or you will have to add grease to them. I, I think around every time you do an oil change, give or take, and add a little bit of grease, but there's a Zerk fitting that you can add it to right on top, and it's really not that complicated. You will retain all your AFM and NPP functions as well as your trunk space because it's a uh, top-mounted turbo kit. And you also have the availability for supplemental injection, methanol, port injection, so on and so forth. CSP also offers an interchiller, in which case they can reroute the AC and the freon on the AC to put it through the intake manifold to really bring down those intake manifold temps. This is something that is kind of unique that not a lot of people do, and this is a big pinnacle point of what they do. Um, you can see even on super hot days, they'll run this car pretty hard. And the throttle body will actually have frost and, and condensation on it because of the interchiller system. So great, great system that goes in that. The only downfall to it is you're going to lose your air conditioning inside the cabin when you're running this, at least the last time I checked. So um, if you want to see this kit a little bit more, you can check out this one channel. Everybody, I don't know if you've seen him or not, is Chevy Dude. Uh, Chevy Dude is a very well-known YouTuber. He's got close to a million followers. He's very funny. He runs his own uh, a car dealership now in, in Indiana, I believe, uh, called uh, Mike's Car Store. And he's a great channel to watch, too. You should check him out. He's very funny, very knowledgeable. He's a car salesman for a long, long time. He knows all the ins and outs. But he's a, a C8 uh, fan and Corvette enthusiast as well. Then you have uh, East Coast Superchargers in uh, New Jersey. They have a top-mounted kit as well, which features uh, 62 to 66 turbos, which are fed by the engine's oil system. So you're going to have external pumps, feeding everything back in there, something like that. Not like the um, uh, oilless turbos on the uh, Complete Street Performance Kit, but you are gonna actually gonna have to tap into the oil system on the uh, East Coast Supercharger, or the uh, East Coast Superchargers Kit to get oil to the turbos. They retain your catalytic converters and all their manifolds are also made in house. They have a jig which they make all their manifolds and everything, which are gonna be stainless steel manifolds with stainless downpipes and retaining your factory catalytic converters. You'll keep your AFM valves, your Kipo MPP valves, and you'll retain all your trunk space as well too. Uh, you will also have dual 45 millimeter waste gates and dual 50 millimeter blow up valves. And they claim about, last time I checked, 
575 wheel horsepower and 530 pound-feet of torque at 4 PSI, or you can upgrade the kit and get 623 wheel horsepower and 576 pound-feet of torque at 6 PSI with the dots and clutches. Now, they're also going to recommend if you go with that that you get the G-Force axles and as well as a valve train upgrade, just like pretty much all these other kits probably should get as well too. So keep that in mind too. Now also keep in mind all these horsepower and torque numbers that I'm mentioning, these are, uh, all cars are different. So it's a case by case basis. Your car might make more, it might make less. All cars are different, but these are just general broad numbers. Um, I believe the CSP kit is gonna run you somewhere around $28,000 including install. But again, call them to verify to make sure because that may have changed. And the ESC, uh, East Coast Superchargers, they have not released pricing yet. Um, but they are going to run, I'm going to guess, somewhere around the area of $25,000. I've spoken to Chris from ESC multiple times. He is another fantastic guy, super nice, very knowledgeable, really, really just great guy to talk to. He'll talk with you all day long if he could. Um, great, great guy. I really like talking to him every single time I speak with him. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, right now, they are doing all their kits in-house only. They possibly are playing with the idea of sending this out to uh, have it be a mail out kit, but they kind of want to keep everything in house for now, just to keep an eye on to make sure everything is okay. Um, they are working on a carb compliance as well too. They are actively, I think, working with SEMA to try to get a carb compliance on their kit. So that will be very good for the customers in California because this kit has a, a top mounted intercooler, just like on the Pro Charger system. The intake manifold has an intercooler incorporated into it but then the um, factory air box actually stays in place. So it retains the factory air box. And this is the only kit that I know of that does that. Uh, it's going to retain the factory air box, which is gonna be a big, big thing for carb compliance as well as getting this in California. So again, top quality kits from both of these places, great shops, great reputations on both ends. I highly recommend both of them. And ECS actually even also offers the availability of the Magnuson Supercharger if you wanna go that route instead too. Now, both of these kits, too, I'm pretty sure are going to be available for coupe and convertible. Um, however, you have to keep in mind, though, if you have a convertible and you have top-mounted kits, you're going to get a lot of heat in that compartment because that heat's going to have nowhere to go. On the coupe, you have all that extra space and you have the vents on top, and it just gets out a little easier. Yes, the convertible has the vents as well, too, but it's, I don't think it's as good as the coupe. So um, double-check with them. If you have a convertible, they may or may not want to do it at this point. Um, but it is something to keep in mind and call them just to make sure. So these last two kits are going to be the two kits that I saved for last because unfortunately I have the least amount of information on them. There's not going to be a whole lot of stuff of uh, information available on them because they keep a lot of their stuff secret and or it's just not out there probably for good reason because well they want to keep their secrets close to them which I don't blame them for especially with these two shops. The first one is going to be from Late Model Racecraft out of Houston, Texas. Um, these guys are very well known. They have their own YouTube channel, tons and tons of videos out there. They've been in business for a long time. They've done a lot of amazing, amazing cars. Uh, Stephen Faraday is the owner operator of it. He's a well-known tuner. He knows exactly what he's doing. Very, very smart guy. I met him and spoke to him a couple times. He's, he's really, really, he, he knows his stuff. If he tells you something, then it, it's, that's what it is, okay? So they also have a wonderful staff there. Otherwise, uh, you can call up and if you want to get one of these kits from them, or any other customization of them, call them up. You can speak to either a, a gentleman named Justin or a gentleman named Will. They're the parts and sales people, and they'll help you out a lot. So with the LMR kit, um, you can't self-install. This is a fully um, or a unique custom kit to the shop. They're going to put it in the shop only, and it's going to go on your car as, see, as they see fit. You can do a bunch of different customizations with it, custom catbacks and things like that, you, and which in case if you put the custom catback, you're going to lose your NTP and your AFM. But you can probably also leave your own factory one, or if you want to leave like the, if you have an aftermarket one on there that retains it, they'll probably keep it on there as well too, but see, keep it to uh, ask them. They keep a lot of their sec uh, specs secret because they don't really want to put it out there because, well, for good reason, and that is they are the world record holder when it comes to C8s. Now, mind you, they did this before HP tuners was available. They did this with fuel tech computers and with a factory ECM and did this with all piggyback. They ran an 8.835 at 160.19 miles per hour in the quarter mile of the C8. That is an impressive number, especially with a factory ECM. That is something that nobody else, nobody has beaten yet. They hold that record, they broke the old one, and they've held in that for at least some time. The only thing that I can gather is it is a top mounted kit, and you do have precision 6266 turbos. Uh, it's pretty much the only real information I can get on them. 
Uh, they are custom kits, top mounted, and they do offer a one year, 12,000 mile warranty on their work, whatever you go down in their shop. Uh, speak to Steven, they will be able to help you out with a lot. Um, you are gonna have to ship your car to them and things like that, <coughs> excuse me, to get the car down there to get it worked on. So you can't obviously self-install these kits. But they work on a lot of different cars too. They work on C6, C7, C8s, CTSs, CTSVs. I'm sure they're gonna be doing the black wings now that HP Tuners has been unlocked for them as well too. They do a lot of Camaros and a variety of other stuff. And they've even done some high-end stuff, some luxury exotics, McLarens and Lamborghinis and Ferraris and so on and so forth. Very, very well known, or very good quality, high quality shop. I would definitely recommend them to pretty much anybody. Check out their channel too. They have a lot of great stuff up there. The other one, the last one I'm gonna touch on when it comes to the twin turbo kits is Vengeance Racing. There's almost no information out there available, at least when I checked on it. Maybe some stuff has come available. When HP Tuners made their big announcement, that it was available. The car that they featured the most was a twin turbo kit that Vengeance put out. The only information that I could seem to gather is that it's a Huron kit, which uh, we all know is twin turbo kits. We've seen those on ZL1s in the past and Mustangs and so on and so forth. Um, and they are comp, comp turbos, but I believe they're race only. Uh, last time I checked on their website, meaning they won't sell you this kit if it's going to be a street car. However, that was before the announcement from HP Tuners. Um, I apologize, this is the one place that I don't have a lot of information on. Vengeance Racing is based out of Georgia, I believe, so you'll just have to give them a call. Again, they're a very, very well-known shop, high quality work, they've done a lot of great things, they have their own channel as well too, and they have a long, long history of high quality work as well. Now the last thing I'm gonna touch on here is for all you guys that wanna keep your car old school, per se, or whatever you wanna call it, and keep it naturally aspirated. Now, again, with the whole HP Tuners release, this opens up a whole new world for you to be able to do things to your car. Cam it, you can put stroker kits in it, you can, you can alter the heads, high flow heads, all the other bolt-ons, you're gonna get the most out of it now, and that's what's really gonna be the best out of it, E85s and so on and so forth, okay? Now, from what people have seen or so far with testing, seems like the bolt-on modifications aren't really going to be your best bet right off the bat because it really does seem like the factory ECM, the factory calibration, does not leave a whole lot on the table to be gained especially with just a tune alone. If you add bolt-ons, yeah, you're probably gonna get a little bit more out of it, but you're not gonna see astronomical gains on it. Now, this is also gonna be the cheapest route out of all of these. Now, you can go and get yourself some bolt-on modifications. Uh, things like the Eventuri intake, which will run you about $2,500. Uh, any exhaust will run you anywhere from $1,500 to $4,500, give or take, depending on what you get. Headers will be about another $2,000 to $2,500. You can get the uh, PTR intake manifold with the 95 millimeter throttle body, which will run you about $2,800 and so on and so forth. And this stuff adds up. Now, Pites Performance is also offering a what they call a Charlie package. And that's going to be a naturally aspirated package with a cam, heads, and so on and so forth. Now, DSX supposedly is also working on an E85 flux fuel sensor for this car as well, too. And that will be another big power adder once you get it and will add even more power to even all the other modifications that you do on top of it also. So from what we've seen, Paragon just recently released a video with uh, a lot of their bolt-on modifications with E85 and they were producing about 500 wheel horsepower with just bolt-ons. Intake manifold, I believe, and exhaust, intake, uh, Haltech, or um, I'm not sure which one it is, I believe it was Haltech, and uh, they put E85 in it as well. Now these things dyno at about 440 wheel horsepower. So then when you get to about 440 to 500, you're gaining 60 wheel horsepower. Now Pites, if you look on their website, they have a Charlie package available that they claim 80 horsepower approximate gain. Now I don't know if this is wheel horsepower or crank horsepower, but let's keep it conservative and let's call it crank horsepower. That means you're probably looking somewhere in the range of about 525 or 550 wheel horsepower if you were to do this Charlie naturally aspirated package with the camshaft, supported cylinder heads, and then all of the bolt-ons on top of it. So this is if you wanna add just a little bit more and get something a little bit more, still make it noticeable. You're still gonna be spending some money, but you are gonna get some more power, but you're not gonna to have to worry about the complications that come with a twin turbo or a supercharger system on top of that. So that's pretty much all the different routes that you can go. And there you have it. I tried to keep this as simple as I possibly could while still giving you enough details to make as much of an informed decision as you can make, depending on what route you want to go. Now, if you have any other questions on anything, by all means, go ahead and check out the rest of my YouTube channel. I have plenty of videos up there that have some other content on it. And let me know what you think if you want to know about any other information or anything else in particular. But 
I mean, if that's all I've got for you, I hope this helps. I hope you can help make an informed decision. And remember, this is not a complete comprehensive guide. Don't take all the numbers that I said literally. The horsepower numbers are not gonna be exact. The costs are not gonna be exact. Things change, prices change, all cars are different. All cars produce different types of power. So just keep that in mind when you're going down that road. It might be to your benefit, but it might be to your disadvantage, but that's what it's all about. Take your car, make it your own, do whatever you want to it. That's what it's really all about. We're all here because we all love cars. So anyways, that's about it. I hope this helps. Good luck.